All right, guys, so archaeology actually uses a lot of different scientific understanding. Uh, and one of the big ones that we use is geology. Now, geology is the study of rocks, but also how the earth was formed and the kind of physical processes that happen down in the ground. And the reason archaeologists need to understand this is because if you're digging in the dirt, you need to understand how the dirt got there. So the way dirt builds up is through deposition of soil. So that's just a big fancy word that means that soil comes into a place and it can happen through a lot of ways. There's erosion that causes soil deposition. So the wind and the water will push the dirt around and have it drop off in certain places. There is weather, so big rainstorms move dirt around. And then you have big things, of course, like tornadoes and hurricanes and tsunamis, those all move dirt around. Um, just the actions that people do sometimes moves dirt around. That's human action, so we may dig a hole and that's gonna change how the ground looks there. And of course, decay. So plants and animals die and fall and all this causes soil deposition. Now, when archeologists dig, we see all of those layers. They end up looking like layers. Those layers are called strata. And when we look at all of those layers, we call stratigraphy. Now, this is important because when we go and we dig, we can look at that stratigraphy and we can build together the history of the archeological site that we're looking at. So we're gonna dig into stratigraphy in this lesson. Okay, so let's draw some stratigraphy from the ground up, covering the entire earth underneath all of the dirt is a layer of rock called bedrock. Now this isn't just like, you know, little bits of rock. This is big amounts of rock, huge rocks. So that is our bedrock. On top of this bedrock is what we call subsoil. Now, sometimes when archeologists dig, they find things in subsoil but sometimes when they dig there, they find that it's empty. On top of our subsoil are going to be layers of topsoil. And it's in the topsoil that archeologists find most human activity. So here on our topsoil, say someone comes along and they build a fire. Now that fire is actually going to leave traces behind. It is going to burn the soil that it is on and actually change the color of it so that it's red. It may also leave behind flecks of charcoal from the wood that is burning. Now, after the person is done, say they put out their fire and they move along those traces are going to remain in the earth. Now, as more soil gets deposited on top of it, it's going to build another layer and that will be eventually buried. Now say on top of this new layer of topsoil, someone comes along and say it's a Native American, they come along and they make an arrowhead. Now in the process of making that arrowhead, they make a lot of chips of rock. Archaeologists call that debitage. It's really just chips of rock. So all of that gets created. That's gonna, and he leaves that because that's trash and he walks off with his nice fresh arrowhead. Now as time passes, more dirt is gonna get deposited on top of that and it's gonna get buried. Now, say an archaeologist comes along and they dig here. So say so we dig our trench right here. That archaeologist is going to find both our debitage, our flakes from making an arrowhead, and they're going to find that red soil and those flecks of charcoal. How is the archaeologist going to know which happened first? Or are they going to think they happened at the same time? Well, this is where the stratigraphy comes in. Because this layer is lower down, they know that this happened first, 
the fire was made, then more soil got deposited, and then the flakes were left. It gives them an order. This is what archaeologists call the law of superposition. Now this is a big fancy word that really just means the deeper you dig, as you dig down into the earth, the older things get. So according to the law of superposition, we know that this fire was made and put out before someone made an arrowhead here and left all of these flakes behind. Okay. So let's look at something that's a little more complicated. So this is another example of stratigraphy that you might find. Now here at the bottom, we've got our subsoil. We've got lots of layers and lots of things going on. We've got a fire here with some, these are ceramics around it. We've got a layer with some small trenches dug into it. We've got a pit here with some stuff in it. And we've got more layers, another pit up here. And finally, we've got a brick wall up here. So let's start at the bottom and talk about what each of these are. So here we have uh, a fire pit and some ceramics. Now this is going to be an example of how stratigraphy doesn't only help us put things in order, but by looking at the artifacts that are found, we can start to piece together, maybe put dates to when things happened and maybe figure out what kind of activities were going on. So if we have a fire pit with ceramics around it that date to Native Americans, say these ceramics date to the late woodland period. So if you have pieces of ceramics, so ceramic is a fancy word for pottery. So if you have pieces of pottery around a fire, maybe that means people were cooking. So this could have been a Native American cook fire. On top of that, we've got these holes placed, spaced so often. Now you can kind of see that there's one here under this pit. This pit was dug into it. Now, Something paced so regular like that seems like it would probably be part of a building, maybe. But because there's no artifacts there, we can't say sure. But we know that it was done after the late woodland period. Now we get to this pit. This pit, the bottom of this pit, comes down to the same layer that we have here. So does it date to that same time? No, of course not. It was dug down into. So this is where you have to watch with the law of superposition. Even though the things at the bottom of this pit are this deep down, we know that they were later because the top of the pit is up here. So down in here, we've got a bunch of bone. Now, none of this is dated, so we don't know when it was here. We know it was after this building, probably if this was a building or a fence after this stopped being used. Then we had this pit where this bone was dumped. Maybe it was a storage pit. Maybe it was where they were throwing their trash after they were cooking or eating. Any one of those is a possibility. So now we've got a couple more layers here and we've got another pit. Again, this pit dates to the top of the pit here, not the bottom of the pit. And so bottom of the pit doesn't seem to have anything, but up here at the top of the pit, there are quite a few number of things. So we've got pieces of brick you can see here. There is bone around, and then we also have some more ceramic in these pink and blue things. And say these ceramics dated to 1790. Now, what does that date tell us? Does that mean that this entire pit dates to 1790? Well, maybe not, right? Because there's a lot in here at the bottom. But when this pit stopped being used, or when they filled in this pit, they threw in a bunch of trash to fill it in. And that's where these ceramics come in. So, could this pit have been filled before 1790? No, because these ceramics wouldn't exist. But any time after 1790, so it could have been... 1800, it could have been 1850, it could have been even later than that, that this pit could have been filled in. So we know at least 1790 or earlier. So let's go over that again. Let's look up here. 
we have this brick wall, and then we have this little object here. So this is a coin. And let's say that this coin dated to 1840. Well, now we have a bit more information. So this wall was built sometime after 1840. This coin was made in 1840 and it was purposely placed here in this brick wall. People would do that sometimes for good luck. So that coin was placed here in 1840. This wall could have been built any time after that. We know that this pit must have been filled in before 1840 and probably a little while before 1840 because this coin is on top of it. So by looking at artifacts, by dating them, we can piece together the site's history. We had Native Americans here. Then later we had people built something. They had a pit here. Then we had even later people having another pit here. And then finally on top of all of it, they built a brick wall. We know that sometime after 1790, this pit was filled in. And we know sometime after 1840, this wall was built. So that starts to give us a timeline. This is how archaeologists use artifacts and stratigraphy to put together a site's history and to figure out dates of events. So what does this all have to do with the activity that you guys are going to do? Well, agate ware is the type of pottery that dates to the 1700s. Potters would use different colors of clay mixed or marbled together to mimic agate stones. And we actually have a piece of agate ware that was found here at Jefferson Patterson Park um, on a site called Smith St. Leonard. This site is down at the south end of the park and it was occupied in the 1700s by the Smith family. So in the area that was identified as the kitchen, there was a subfloor pit. And in that pit, they f one of the things they found was pieces of agate ware cutlery. Uh, that cutlery dated to 1740, which helps helped the archaeologists date that pit. So this pit was carefully filled and then capped. So we know that that didn't take place until after 1740 because that cutlery wouldn't have existed before 1740. So it helped the archaeologists put together the sequence of events that happened in that area of the site.